Hey everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. So today we're going to be talking about the law of conservation of mass and we're going to be comparing this in an open system and in a closed system to see the difference between the masses before and after our science experiment. So first, what does the law of conservation of mass state? It states that mass cannot be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. So I need you to keep this in mind as we're doing our open and closed system and viewing our results. So what's going to happen is we're going to look at an open system and in the open system, it's where matter and energy can leave the system. In other words, we're not going to put a lid over our flask. We're going to allow some of the gases and particles to enter the air in the system around them. So in, or in other words, the atmosphere, right? Around them and to leave our system of the flask. Now, the closed system that we're going to have, it's where matter and energy cannot leave the system. So you can either do something like put a cork in it, um, a lid, some kind of sealed container. In our case, we're gonna be putting a balloon on top so that we can capture all of those gases and they don't leave our system. So we're gonna start and we're gonna use all of these materials here that you see. We're gonna be mixing vinegar and baking soda inside a flask. Um, we're gonna need a spoon, some balloons. You do need a scale. I'm using a digital scale today and you're going to need just a little cup um, in order to measure out your baking soda. So let's go ahead and get started you guys. Okay we're going to start with our closed system and you can see I put a heaping um, spoonful of baking soda inside a balloon and put it on top of a flask that has a little bit of vinegar at the bottom. I'm going to take the mass of it now and you can see that it says 236 grams. And go ahead and put that as your initial. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the experiment. You can pour in the baking soda and you can see that it starts to bubble fizz and foam up. It will expand the balloon with all the gases pushing outward on it. Pretty violent reaction happening and eventually it will start to subside and you'll see those bubbles decrease, go back down to the bottom now, when our chemical reaction is done and the bubbling has ended, I am going to go ahead and put it on a digital scale and take the mass that is going to be our final mass for our closed system. So remember, the initial was 236. If the law of conservation is true in this case, we should get 236 as well. And let's see what we get. I'm going to put it on the scale and it is 234 grams is our final. Okay, so let's look at our closed system. We had an initial mass of 236 grams and a final mass of 234 grams. So we have a difference of two grams. Where in the world did it go? The law of conservation of mass says that it cannot be destroyed in this chemical reaction. And I'm gonna tell you, it's still right there. And I know this sounds weird because we just put it on the digital scale and it clearly did not say that, but it is. It's because when we put it on the digital scale initially, pretty much all that was acting on it was a force of gravity. So all of our forces were in a downward motion. Now that we have a chemical reaction and all those gases are released and we're building up pressure in our balloon, our gases are pushing outward and upward on this balloon as well. So it's not going to be the full intensity or the weight of the balloon and flask as it was initially. Now we have other forces at work here and that accounts for our two missing grams. Go ahead and check out a open system now. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start our mass measurements for our flask and vinegar. And you can see that comes out to 480 grams. Now we're gonna go ahead and measure a cup. This is just an empty cup and that comes to two grams. We're gonna go ahead and put baking soda in that cup and take the measurement of mass again. And you can see that is 26 grams. Now we're going to perform our experiment. We're going to put the baking soda inside our flask, watch it bubble fizz and foam up. You can see this is an open system, so there's no lid or seal on the top. All of the gases are leaving the system and going out into the air surrounding it, into the outer system around it. And you can see that we're waiting, we're giving it time to fully stop fizzing and foaming here at the bottom in order for us to take its final mass. Now, once it goes ahead and stops, we're gonna get back on the digital scale, take our final mass, and you can see that that comes to 498 grams. All right, so let's go ahead and look at our open system. 
So here's all the measurements. You can see the mass of the flask and vinegar was 480 grams. The cup was two grams. The cup and the baking soda was 26 grams. So here's why I took those two. I took those two measurements because we're gonna calculate the mass of just the baking soda. So I'm gonna subtract the mass of the cup. So with the cup, it was 26. If I subtract the cup, that means I have 24 grams of baking soda that I'm actually using in my experiment. We don't wanna include the mass of the cup. It wasn't part of the actual chemical reaction. So when I combined the baking soda, the vinegar, and the flask, they all come to 504 grams. Now the final mass is gonna be 498 grams. That's after the chemical reaction took place. So if I subtract those two, 504 minus the 498, you're gonna get a difference of six grams. That means six grams went out and left our open system and went into the surrounding air or surrounding system around it. And those are gonna be in the form of mostly gases and small particles and molecules. I hope this was helpful to understanding the difference between open and closed systems, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye.